There is a saying that lies have very short legs. Nothing more wrong. Lies repeated for centuries, sacralized in art, in churches, may live for a very long while. And when they crumble with their very tall, leviathan-like legs, they bring disasters. So, no matter what you say about Jesus, Christianity, it was a total lie. Judeo-Christianity is a false religion. However, this is just a little introduction to magic, psychosexuality and religion. So, religion in secularized forms are life management in all its aspects, administering the beliefs, the techniques, the magical techniques, the spiritual techniques and so on. It is also conditioning sexual behaviors and codes. Now, the vantage point is that religion and other aspects of societal, ideological, political and so on are a multi-aspected conditioning juggernaut. So, think about superstructure of ideas as in complex adaptive systems. The historical processes are very complex and the cultural religious complexes are very complex as well. What are complexes in the Jungian framework? There are clusters of affect images. In this sense, we will analyze the clusters of sexual symbols, role models, set relations in between the progenitors and heroes of our little tale, and coexist or condense experiences from the societal religious perspective as the landscape of output. Now, religion is a form of a projection of morality, sexuality, behavioral cognitive codices, and uh, objective metaphysical forces exist, may exist, and I may affirm the ontologically independent existence of forces, but, uh, citing Kozybski, a Warsaw-born mathematician, the map is not the territory in his theory of general semantics, or religion is not the divinity and definitely not the map of divinity as such. So, interpreting any divine sciences or any divinity in doxology, Parmenidian doxology of opinion making, is prone to errors, cognitive errors, bias and uh, historical errors in the historical political processes of religious exponents. It is, it is also governed politically, society, where the power goes, where the money goes, where the wealth goes, where the aristocracy goes and so on and so on. So this whole clustering of the superstructure of ideas creates a multipolar enantodromia. That is, it's not swinging just left, right, cold, hot, but it's a very serious sophisticated web of interconnected, interdependent holes that are multipolar. If you pull one string, you can influence three more things. In other ways, if you pull three things, one thing is influenced and so on. So what is, for example, conscientia? Conscientia uh, is co-knowing in Rome and uh, later it was religiously conditioned as to feel conscientious. So, for example, it is scaffolded with socialized dogma, with morality, doctrine and beliefs and deforming the human bestiality in idyll as such. Because you can write anything in human nature, it is how it is trained later that is the effect of what a humane mortal being is. Now, the psychosexual constellations of Judeo-Christianity and Islam is what I'd like to talk about. In the primitive societies we have the allowed and the taboo, or the sacred and the taboo. So the saints and sinners in Judeo-Christianity and Islam are something completely different than, for example, heathen saints or uh, shamanic leaders and so on and so on, depending on the society we live in. And I would like to bring this point to the fore, that the model of a nobilitas, pagan, holy man, was completely different than that of Judeo-Christian uh, martyrs, holy persons, and so on. So, the models of sainthood and priestly classes in Christianity is conditioning their sexuality and uh, some effect of their sexual actions, including sexual magic and uh, transposing it to the soul language of metaphysics or the soul that is conditioned by the mind and psychosexual complexes. No, it is not immortal, the daemon is immortal as in uh, condense it from the anima mundi. So yes, souls are mortal and they are mainly conditioned by uh, minds, psychosexual complexes and so on and so on, in which, about which I talked in a different lecture. 
So <clears throat> let's focus on the psychosexual constellation, some patterns that I extracted from the Judeo-Christian ideas. So we have a projection of an all-male universal father figure that is felt filtered through desert morality. Uh, later by the invention of the seven sins that was Pope Gregory the first if I remember in the sixth or seventh century modern era he took an array of stoic virtues array of stoic virtues and then inverted seven of them to create the seven deadly sins and that was his projection of what he disliked in human beings so the use of baptism, a Jewish idea, baptism was a symbol of liberation from Roman rule. Uh, therefore, it is a holy Judaistic ritual. However, it has some magical and, uh, let's say, occult propensity. So water, in this sense, in this ritual, as the pregnant womb. And that induces soul erotica from infantile state sexuality to ectoplasm, so like sexual watery drives, this kind of milky surroundings if you feel unsold. And in asceticism of the priestly and sainthood classes, these sexual constellations lead either to meek tranquility or pedophilia, that is the drive is directed at young and unspoiled souls. It is natural that it is attracting those psychos to children because they are conditioned in such a way and it is up to their discipline and restriction to understand it. But most of priestly and saintly classes of Judeo-Christianity have no fucking idea about the sexual magic that goes on in between it. So, it also leads to homosexuality, the male upon male hyper-masculine drive, the concentration of male sexual energies and rejecting the female constellation. So, male upon male with uh, hyper-sexualized yet repressed drive that is transposed directly to his soul of this watery pregnant womb type leads to such deviations. At the same time, the complex system of the Judeo-Christian God, I'm not talking about the metaphysical understanding of their deity, but a certain set of psychosexual occult symbols, uh, creates a revanchist, jealous war emblem, uh, Mars Sphere, and it is mediated by the self-cannibalizing figure of Eros Thanatos, figures of a crucified Jew, that is Galilean Jesus, an immature idea of love exploding at the expense of all other virtues that made pagans, nobilitas, humane human beings. And the figure of a corpse that is misericordia, Eros Thanatos complex drives to thanatophilia and rigor or to sadistic and lustful behaviors when repressed. And antodromia again, they become strict, dry and may turn into violent rapes, murder or bestial actions they not necessarily do. Now it is interesting that from the historical perspective in the 4th century when uh, Galileans or the sectarians of Hebrews called Christians merged with cult of Dionysus in Sicily they performed great orgies in the name of their Galilean and that was the expression of their love. So uh, depending on which aspect, which cult we take uh, this Galilean Hebrew sectarian religion of Christianity took on many guises Mm, and uh, to sum up this lecture, modern degeneration or hypersexuality is not the result of modern times, but it is a direct result of secularized Judeo-Christian backlash against Perfian, everything in moderation, nothing in excess. Think Victorian times and the degenerate offspring in the interbellum period. So this is happening exactly now. The Logos is dead, the Judeo-Christian corset is abandoned and it is all bursting forth as pseudo Dionysian kitsch sewers up there. So I hope that uh, this lecture wasn't supposed to explain absolutely every psychosexual constellation and the metaphysical, metaphysical transposition interpretation upon it, but it should provide some cues uh, for you to think about religion, about cult as a um, psychosexual pneumatic map of something that refuses to obey it. So people may do horrible things to each other conditioned by religious impulses and drives. And what Judeo-Christianity done by destroying the harmony 
of the cultic nobilitas, for example, Mediterranean ideas, that uh, managed instincts, sexual, behavioral, uh, cognitive impulses, in a much more masterful way, way than Judeo Christianity ever done, is something to be thought about. Thank you.